Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Beyond the Cage. I am your host, Jim Graham. You can follow me on Twitter, at Jim Graham. Today, joining me on the line, we have a special guest. He is fresh off his victory at UFC 195 over Kanihara. He is Michael Mayday McDonald. And Michael, thanks for coming on Beyond the Cage. Absolutely, man. Now, Michael, of course, as fans know, this is your first fight in the UFC in about three years. And did it feel like your first fight in the UFC all over again? Nah, no way, man. I actually felt really, really calm and really, uh, really good for this one. Um, yeah, I, I felt felt really good. I, I was feeling confident. I, I was training for a long time for this fight, so I mean, going into it, I felt good. Now, of course, uh, us in the media like to bring up uh, octagon rust whenever a fighter such as yourself has had a layoff of significant time. So, did you feel rusty at all when you actually stepped foot in the octagon? No, I didn't feel like I was rusty. I mean, he did a, a good job with his game plan. I mean, we came out and within 10 seconds, I cracked that guy, and I think he changed his mind about standing up for very long, and he turned out to be a, a phenomenal grappler who had a great pressure and great understanding of, uh, you know, how to put me up against the cage and have my head always pointing the wrong direction. Um, he, he, was, he was amazing, and he was doing his game plan very well, but I didn't feel like it was anything of... Uh, you know, like I was trying to do it and I wasn't able to do anything. I felt like everything that I tried to do, I was able to do. Um, so I didn't feel any ring rust. Now, according to the stats, it says that Kanihara hits you 77 times, but did he hurt you with any of those shots, Michael? I think those stats are wrong. There's no way he hit me 77 times. That's impossible. Um, yeah, that's ridiculous. I think he hit me like five times on the ground, something like that, and he hit me maybe twice on the feet. Uh, there was one shot on the feet um, that uh, caught me at a good angle, right on the chin, and that uh, that dazed me a little bit. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't too much where uh, you know it was alarming or anything. That kind of stuff happens all the time in the gym. Now, did you expect uh, Connie Hard to come out? against you with a grappling heavy attack? No, I really didn't expect anything. I, I, I think that when you do expect for them to do one or the other, it, it sets you up for failure, um, if, especially if they don't do it. Um, so, you know, I, I tried to be prepared for everything. I was doing a lot of grappling. I was doing a lot of striking. I was doing a lot of, of everything. And, um, you know, that's just the way where he, he chose to take it. And, uh, like I said, he was, he was incredible at it. Um, I definitely say I, I learned a, learned a bit, which is awesome. Um, you know, you usually have to take the losses to, to get big learning experiences. So it's nice to get a win and a big learning experience. Now, in your escape from his choke, you were able to come out of that and get a choke of your own. And is that escape attempt that you did from his choke, is that something you work on or was that just something where you saw an opportunity and you ended up taking it? No, I, that, that is something that I do. I mean, if I, you, you never want to, you know, have to reverse an arm triangle because you don't want to be caught there in the first place. But if I ever do get caught in it, that's the way I usually try to get out of it. Um, so that it, it was, normal for me, um, but man, he has just great pressure. I usually get out a lot easier than that. Now, of course, you got the win there at UFC 195, but you were able to get one of the performance of the night bonuses, so that had to be the icing on the cake for you to get that extra 50 grand, huh? Oh, absolutely, man. Absolutely. You know, in, in, in my in my mind, I would have loved to, to stop him in the first, first 10 seconds with that, you know, that riot. Or I would have loved to finish him with that guillotine or something like that, you know, and, and, and that would be like my best plan. Um, but but you know what? God's best plan is way better than mine. And uh, that was part of God's plan. And uh, for, for the fight to end how it did so I can learn what I need to learn and, and still get a bonus and, um, you know, every, every, everything is good. You know, it, it was a little frustrating that um, he was doing so well, 
for a fight. So it was very frustrating for that part of me. But, um, you know, after it's all said and done, you know, and I'm seeing that it went the way that God planned it to. And, you know, I can't argue with that. And the end result is good. And, uh, you know, yeah, I can't complain too much. Now, your win was a few weeks ago here at UFC 195. And with your previous uh, injury layoff, uh, are you looking to fight sooner rather than later, Michael? Um, not exactly. You know, I, I don't think that it's, you know, so much of I want to get back immediately or I don't want to get back or anything like that. It's just when I'm ready. Um, you know, I, I, I spent uh, a lot of time training for that fight. I think total was like, uh, like nine months of training for that fight. So it, it, was a, it was a big, big, long process. So I, I don't think I'm mentally ready to just jump right back into it and go into another fight camp. Um, you know, my body's pretty healthy, but, uh, you know, it just, yeah, it, it, it just drains you when you go that, that long and every single day, you know? So I'm looking forward to, instead of, you know, focusing on, you know, the performance of my body right now, fixing the, uh, the, the all the mistakes of you know, the martial arts problem and making sure that uh, all the holes in the game are fixed and that I make, make all the necessary corrections from my last fight. So that's what I'm looking forward to right now. And then, uh, after I put a little bit more time in fixing those mistakes, then we'll go in get the next fight. Do you have a opponent in mind for your next fight, Michael? I would like to fight Brian Caraway. You know, no, nothing you know disrespectful about it. And he's called me out a couple of times. And I think that would be a great fight. I think it'd be a very exciting fight. And uh, we're both on the yeah, you know, doing really good in our careers right now, and um, you know he's, he's had some some very good wins on of his own, you know against uh, Eddie Wineland, you know. So I think uh, Brian is doing great, and I and he uh, suggests that fight. I think it would be a great fight. As fans know, the injuries that kept you out of action these last couple of years were a series of hand injuries, and with that mainly just affecting your hand. Was that more frustrating, the fact that your hand just kept on getting hurt? Yeah, it was, it was kind of frustrating because my right hand is, you know, that's my, my go-to weapon, you know, but um, it, it was different injuries of my right hand. You know, the first one I had was my knuckle, and then the second injury that I had was actually um, – it wasn't my, my, my knuckle, it was actually the joints inside of my hands, um, the ones that don't move, you know, so, um, and then I had to go back and get another surgery on that, you know, which didn't surprise me, so it, it wasn't as frustrating, it was the same issue. Now, of course, uh, just a few weeks ago, we had Dominic Cruz against TJ Dillashaw for the Bantamweight Championship, of course, your division, and I was wondering, how do you think that fight went between those two, and do you think the judges got it white, right that night in Boston? Well, you know, it, 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 it's tough to say. You know, um, everybody wants to say, you know, you, know you, you, you have to, if you tie the champion, the champion wins, you know. But at the same time, I mean, Dominic never, never lost, you know. Um, but it, it's hard to say that, you know, Dominic didn't do enough to overthrow TJ. You know, I think the argument should be, did TJ do enough to overthrow Dominic? You know, um, and, and I think it was a very, very close fight. And, um, you know, I, I thought they, they both did amazing. But you, you could tell that they, they both trained their butts off. Um, they're both in shape um, at the top of their game. And both of them have a very unique game. Um, now, I, kn I don't think very many people you know, you can say no one fights like TJ and no one fights for sure like Dominic. So they got very unique styles and very, uh, and just, they're very original. I mean, it's, it's very cool to watch and as, as a competitor, it's very exciting to, you know, get to compete against those guys one day. Looking at the title picture in your division, the bantamweight division, 
What do you think is next for Dominic Cruz? A trilogy fight with Uriah Faber or perhaps a rematch uh, with Dillashaw? Well, I'm kind of um, interested to see, you know, um, Rafael Asuncao, he uh, he's kind of in the uh, the rankings. Um, he was the first person to kind of pass me up when I, I went on my injury. And, uh, you know, I haven't seen him fight a lot of the one of the top guys yet. So I, I'd be interested to see how he stacks up with the top guys that are uh, ranked above him. Now, speaking of another uh, great title fight, of course, when you fought at UFC 195, highlighted by the epic war between Carlos Condit and Robbie Lawler for the welterweight title. And uh, what did you think about that fight, Michael? <laughs> oh, man. You know, I would not like to be Robbie Lawler. I mean, that guy has been forced every time he fights. He, he never know. You know, he just doesn't come out there and just blow people out of the water. Every fight that that guy has is one of the best in history. Um, just ruined five round fights from, you know, his initial winning of the title, you know, and with his two fights against Johnny Hendricks to on the Rory McDonald and now this one. Oh my goodness. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to be that guy, you know, but, uh, he, he's an amazing, amazing fighter. And, uh, you know, if you want to score with, you know, damage done, you know, um, I think that you can make a much stronger case for Robbie than you can for uh, for Carlos when you take in consideration the, the, the power that Robbie has and the damage that he did. Now, of course, uh, just a little bit ago, Cain Velasquez pulled out of his title fight uh, against Fabricio Verdum. The UFC tab Stipe Miocha to come in and have an injury replacement. Uh, then just about a day later, Fabricio Verdum decided to pull out of the fight as well. And I was wondering just uh, your thoughts as a fellow fighter. Do you think Verdum made the right move in uh, pulling out of that fight against uh, Stipe Miocic just uh, weeks before it was supposed to happen? Oh, man. Well, I, this is actually the first I've heard about it. I actually don't stay up as much with the, the fight news as someone would imagine, but, um, you know, I mean, there's so much going on, you know, w w with fighters and, um, you know, there's, it's a lot, lot more simple than just oh, scheduling because this is what people want to see, you know? So I, I, I don't think anybody can sit here and blame, you know, um, him for not wanting, I mean, would you like to go and fight, you know, Steve A. Music when you're not, you know, you're 100%. Most people wouldn't do that if there's, you know, they're on the best day and on steroids, you know, I mean, so if, if he's injured, you know, then, uh, yeah, if, if anyone's going to sit here and criticize them, I think they need to, you know, wake up. Final question, Michael, I'll get you out of here with this. Probably the most serious question I've asked all time uh, during this interview, but what is your favorite Ninja Turtle? Dude, that's before my time, man. Yeah, I'm only, I'm only, I just now turned 25. Ninja Turtles were like my older brother's age, you know. People, people just used to love that. They're either, they're, they're like 30 and over, you know. So that was a little before my time. <laughs> All right, I'll take that as the answer, Michael. All right, uh, once again, he is Michael Mayday McDonald. You could follow him on Twitter at Mayday McDonald. And Michael, thanks again for coming on the show. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Thank you. Once again, that was Michael Mayday McDonald right here on Beyond the Cage.